Yeah, yeah. we can always go back and do it again if you want to. Guess what I'm first up to answer the question. Sure. Um, oh, yeah, you, you go, go first. first. Oh, um, I really loved it. Exhausting. <laughs> and thrilling. It's also inspiring. It was just incredible. It's a huge privilege to take on a responsibility to run a year of culture for a city like Leeds. And I feel really proud to have played my role in that. But, you know, it's not something you do on your own. When we kicked off the year, it was absolutely unreal with the awakening. There was so much happening. There were so many different artists from different backgrounds, different demographics who all came together. We were all kind of working with that thing of uplifting like the creativity and culture, but everyone came up with something different through that and it was just really fun and exciting to see. It's been 100% accommodating and I think that's kind of an important message for people going forward. Don't tell people they can't do things because people can do everything. I had a kernel of an idea about this notion of a barn. Art's often a metaphor for something, but I was interested in creating something absolutely real. Women are very rarely involved in actual construction. They don't use power tools, hammers, screwdrivers, etc., but they want to. And I'd seen in a number of films this idea of raising a barn in 24 hours as part of a kind of community endeavour. So I was excited by the idea that in Leeds, 300 women would get together and raise a barn. And in that barn, they could then say, this space is ours and this is what we want to talk about. Everyone's just willing to get stuck in, getting on with the job. We can do these things. The traditional jobs that men used to do, women and non-binary people can do as well. I hoped for an, a, a gasp of, oh my gosh, they did that, we did that. And we did get that gasp. It was amazing. Um, and I hoped that there'll be a legacy of the actual physical thing, which there will be because it's going to a farm, a city farm, to be used for education. But I also hoped most significantly that the women's dreams would be enhanced and that they would sort of think, well, I can do a lot more than I think I can do. I can do a lot more than I've been told I can do. And I can especially do it with lots of other women. Convening relationships between artist to artist, company to company, community to community. Out of that comes some extraordinary collaborations. Tennessee, go make you dance like this. The whole entire project was based on myself and a Nigerian artist who are collaborating. And we tried to connect the two cities of Leeds and Lagos and just see how different are we, how similar are we, where does Leeds' place fit into the world. Oh my God. It was a natural relationship that occurred because me and Brownie, the artist, we connected online and this opportunity came along. It's one of the best things I've ever been part of, just creatively. We've been quite curious about um, encouraging people to connect in, in unusual ways, I suppose. All That Lives is Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, reimagined with the people of Yorkshire. We're really lucky to be collaborating with an amazing team of cartoniera, paper sculptors from Mexico. Shall I pause? <laughs> <laughs> yes, John, John, John. <laughs> Y pues fue un, un intercambio muy muy bonito porque ellos se contagiaron de, 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 de esta fiesta que nosotros traemos, ¿no? de nuestras costumbres, se enamoraron de él. Y nosotros nos contagiamos de, esa, de ese frío que hace aquí, pero de esa calidez humana que, que tienen ustedes. We have a bit of a mantra in the project that it goes from Leeds to Mexico, from silence to conversation, from being alone to being together. And I guess my hope is that people leave with a lighter heart and also with some ideas to prompt new ways of remembering people they've lost. The Neighbourhood Hosts project came out of the fact that I have the privilege of working with this team and conceiving a creative programme for a year of culture. But what happens if you hand that responsibility over to a community? And it was all about culture and creativity, but everybody kind of had a unique 
take on their own event just because everyone's community is so different and yeah we basically spent all summer going to all of the events throughout Leeds and all of the different wards. And you know what's thrilling is the appetite for them. You're fueling skills, you're fueling the economy, but you're also fueling ambition for a city. The importance of all of this is the knock-on wider impacts in terms of how cultural events reach out into the communities, how we can actually get young people engaged and participating. Any city that thinks that it needs to put culture on the back burner is really short-selling the imagination of their children. When you focus mainly on stuff like that, especially when it involves young people, it gives them more of a scope of what's needed or what goes on behind the scenes in terms of putting something together. Knowing that I could be part of a world where no one would judge me and I could just be my complete and utter self, yeah, it, it, it made me feel good like I never have before, honestly. It felt quite like right to do the Noah's Flood because well, it was a chance to show um, everyone that I'm worth something. Well, I want to do more cultural stuff that allows me to explore other religions and understand others for who they are. Because the Leeds 2023 events have been through the day, through the evening, weekends, a lot of people from different backgrounds have been able to sign up. So I've met people with students that have got a great fresh perspective of the modern world. I've met people that have just moved to the country recently and we're looking to understand a bit more about our culture. So I've been getting perspectives from, from their cultural background. And I can honestly say I've, I've made some great friends out of it. I think our volunteers have been extraordinary and so vital to the welcome on any project. Hearing their reflections on each of the works that they've been involved in, hearing their stories has been so thrilling. But also just seeing them be so proud of their city. I think all art is an act of provocation in many ways. It's, um, it's part of the job of the artist to provoke and, and create curiosity and ask questions, right? Um, and so we'd be failing in our job if we weren't um, creating art that asked questions and made you ask questions. DOMA is uh, short for the David Olawali Memorial Association and in 2012 we had the idea for having a, uh, a something to commemorate David. I thought it was such a moving story. I wanted to make a sculpture to commemorate um, his life, but I wanted to take a more positive approach uh, to the work. Hibiscus symbolizes beauty, uh, passion, empathy, uh, uh, love, and those are the things that I would like David to be remembered by. It hasn't really have anything as bold as this in terms of its artworks. And here we have this incredible sculpture that really represents the diversity of our city. But there is also, in that act of making art, the act of telling a story and a new lens to look at something for a city. And I think that we've done that in bucket loads. It's really nice to feel that our voices have been amplified and that we're reaching audiences that maybe don't engage that much with contemporary art. And, and the feedback has always been astounded at the quality of all of the events. The positivity of how different religions, different backgrounds, different abilities, different sort of perspectives on the world have been not just accommodated but celebrated. It's happening, it's, it's already happening. It's just now, how fast is it going to grow? There's a, a real buzz and an excitement and a real sense that Leeds is actually really beginning to claim its rightful place as a, a major capital of culture in the north of England. Let us think about the future and why we might want a different type of city, you know, what our aspirations are for making a place that is inclusive, that is celebratory of the people here and that unites rather than divides. And that's 
what legacy is really, maintaining optimism and commitment to something which is quite ephemeral and hard to describe, but you know when you've made great memories and you know when the future of your children and your grandchildren is that much more varied because they think this is a place where things can happen and I can do things. It's been a really amazing, exciting journey and I feel like even though Leeds 2023 is over, I feel like my own personal journey is just getting started.